वेलकम टू ई पी जी पाठशाला माई नेम इज़ आशा कुठारी चौधरी एंड आई एम अ प्रोफेसर ऑफ इंग्लिश एट गुवाहाटी यूनिवर्सिटी द मॉड्यूल वी आर लुकिंग एट विद इन द कोर्स ऑफ इंडियन राइटिंग इन इंग्लिश इज इन टाइटल ऑल्टरनेटिव सेक्शुअलिटी अ रीडिंग ऑफ महेश दत्तानीज ऑन अ मगी नाइट इन मुंबई एंड ब्रेवली फॉट द क्वीन लेट इज फर्स्ट familiarize ourselves with the life and works of the very well known indian playwright who writes in english mahesh datani he is born in 1958 and he is the first indian playwright to have won the prestigious sahitya academy award in 1998 for his collection of plays final solutions and other plays Mahesh Datani's drama explores the themes that best represents the contemporary political, social and cultural scenarios current in India. In his plays, Datani uses a lively and recognizable Indian English voice to best suit the realities of urban Indian society and the way in which English is really spoken here. Some of the plays that Mahesh Datani has written are and among the best ones are these Where there is a will 30 days in September Seven steps around the fire Dance like a man Bravely fought the queen Tara On a muggy night in Mumbai and many other plays He continues of course to write so there are many more to come as well In this module we will be discussing the presence of alternative sexuality in Indian society and how they are represented in these two plays. The two plays that we look in this module are On a Muggy Night in Mumbai and Bravely for the Queen and both of them deal with the presence of homosexuality or alternative sexualities in in Indian society. this whole idea of alienation and isolation that is experienced by homosexuals has been effectively represented in both the plays that we are considering now but before we go into a, into a, an active consideration and close reading of the plays let us first understand what we mean by alternative sexuality let us establish how the epistemic underpinnings uh will help us understand this idea better in connection with the plays that we are reading sexual orientation that is a deviation from the dominant heterosexual norm is often referred to as alternative sexuality now these different sexual orientations might include homosexuals lesbians or transgender categories however there is a difference between sex gender and sexuality let us consider what that means sex refers to the biological categories like man or woman while gender refers to the cultural and social meanings and identities that are imposed upon each of these categories but the term sexuality has a different meaning uh, than just sex and gender it is a major theme in contemporary debates on identity that have developed parallelly with psychoanalysis with the coming of queer theory feminism and then post feminism so what we are looking at now is a set of orientations or positions and desires it can also be called a psychoanalytic drive uh, as julian has spoken about in 2005 according to the essentialist philosophies sexualities are biological and hence they are fixed hence any deviation from the static heterosexual practices is subjected to marginalization and abuse people possessing alternative sexualities are forced to confine themselves to miserable silence by the power of legal social medical and religious practices and legalities in simple terms sexuality or sexual orientation refers to sexual practices an emotional and sexual attraction of one individual towards another now a person's individual and social identity is invariably 
wrapped around these sexual orientations or attractions. It may be an attraction to a member of the opposite sex, which is known as heterosexuality, an attraction towards the member of both the sexes, which is known as bisexuality, or an attraction towards a member of the same sex, which is referred to as homosexuality. However, these are some of the terms which the society uses to categorize the sexual differences in people. Not only are there social categorizations of sexual differences, there are also marginalizations of certain categories based on the dominant and normative practices. In our society, the normative practice is heterosexuality, which has been an accepted norm, as it has been in many, many societies across the world. Now, in a society where heterosexuality is the accepted order of things, Homosexuality or alternative sexuality, which goes against that grain or against heterosexual practices, is almost always looked down upon by the society as something that is not normal or is abnormal. In India, homosexuality is a taboo for civil society and the government. However, it is said to have a historical origin and in the past, it was not considered as a criminal act as it is considered in our time. The latest Supreme Court judgment on homosexuality defines it as a criminal offense setting aside the Delhi High Court judgment in 2009, which had decriminalized sexual relations between persons belonging to the same sex. Now, although the Supreme Court has made it illegal, homosexuality still exists in India being a normal and a natural kind of variation of human sexual orientation. As a result, people who have an alternative sexual orientation, be it homosexuality, lesbianism or transgender, they have to face oppression and negligence. Their deviation from the normative gender identity gives them a minority status, making most of them psychologically suffer. Now, mar marginalized individuals are those who are cut off or separated from the mainstream social order, which is the heterosexual order. They become marginal. So who is this marginal individual that we are looking at? The concept of marginality itself was first coined by a person called Robert Park in 1928 to refer to a person or a group that has been cut off or isolated from mainstream social life. The same is applicable to the individuals who possess an alternative sexuality. They face the same kind of isolation from the mainstream social life. In order to cope with the mainstream order, they either put up a mask by repressing their actual identity or embrace withdrawal from the society and live in a certain kind of hypocrisy. Many a time, we see a gay man marrying a heterosexual woman and trying to lead a happy life. He has thus repressed his actual life and deceived the other. This forced marriage of the gays to a woman or a woman, or a woman who is a lesbian to a heterosexual man leads both of them to suffer a life that they do not really choose in terms of nature. Sometimes the result of such compulsory social bonding takes a toll on the life of the man or the woman. In a recent incident, we have heard of an Indian origin man in Britain who strangles his wife to death to hide his homosexuality just a few months after their marriage, as it was reported by a local television channel. Although in legal terms, homosexuality or alternative sexualities are considered offences in India, debates and discussions surrounding alternative sexualities have been going on here, which help this otherwise silenced uh, voices to be heard, at certain fora at least. Besides, many instances of activism for the rights of the minorities are also noticeable in India by NGOs like NAS that have helped in breaking their silence and reducing their misery to a great extent. But the majority of our society cannot still accept this issue as normal 
and they possess strong bias against those who do not belong to the heterosexual order. Such social attitudes increases the sense of isolation that is experienced by most gays, lesbians and transgenders and pushes them into a life of misery and humiliation. This whole idea of non-belongingness or isolation or alienation, whatever you choose to call it, has been nicely represented by Ranjit, the character in On a Muggy Night in Mumbai, who says, Yes, I am sometimes regretful of being an Indian because I can't seem to be both Indian and gay. And that is a quote from On a Muggy Night in Mumbai. In this play, we have the unveiling of the presence of homosexuality in India and the pressure and constraints under which the homosexuals have to continue life here. Such repressive and social norms compel them to embrace a very hypocritical life, which is a kind of escapism in some sense. The play deals with the stories of Kamlesh, Ed, Ranjit, Sharad, Bunny, Dipali and Kiran. Now apart from Dipali, who is a lesbian, and Kiran, who is heterosexual, the rest of the characters are representative of the gay community. If we look at the second play that we are considering in this module, Bravely Fought the Queen, we find that it is also a play about a number of women characters and their experience of different forms of violence in different phases of their lives. The play is also about the invisible presence of homosexuality in Indian society. The play is divided into three parts, the women, the men and free for all. Set in the Trivedi household, the major characters of the play include Jitin and Nitin, their two wives Dolly and Alka, and Ba, the mother of Jatin and Nitin. Let us come back to On a Magi Night in Mumbai and directly address the question of alternative sexuality. Now set in Mumbai, the play On a Magi Night in Mumbai deals with issues of gay sex and lesbianism. The play begins in the apartment of Kamalesh, the chief protagonist of the play. The reader can see Kamalesh interacting with a security guard who is also gay, whom Kamalesh offers money in return for sexual gratification. Underneath his heterosexual identity with a wife, the security guard is really gay, who is afraid of accepting his gay identity publicly. Centering on Kamalesh's life, the play proceeds to represent a group of well-to-do homosexuals and lesbians, their self-discoveries, their revelations, and the dilemma they carry always with them. Kamlesh, the chief protagonist, is represented as a weak and sensitive fellow who is completely broken up after he becomes separated from his gay partner Prakash. Prakash like Kamalesh, is also afraid of publicly revealing his homosexuality. Hence, he decides to marry Kiran, Kamalesh's sister, so that he can continue his love affair with Kamalesh as his brother-in-law. Under this pseudonym that he assumes, Ed, Prakash is in love with Kamalesh's sister Kiran, while as Prakash, he is the lover of Kamalesh. Likewise, Bunny, Another gay character in the play also maintains a double stance. By performing the role of a good husband at home and taking care of his wife and children and enjoys being a gay man with his male partners on the sly. Ranjit enjoys his gay identity by visiting uh, countries abroad where he has a gay partner. Only Sharad is bold enough to accept his gay identity publicly and is comfortable with his life. On the other hand, we also have the character of Dipali, who represents the lesbian in the play. She is bold, more restrained and comfortable with her lesbian identity than all of the men are with their homosexual identities. Contrary to what is happening inside the flat of Kamlesh, there is a wedding, a heterosexual wedding, that is going on outside the flat. 
The wedding stands for the heterosexual world which celebrates the union of a man and a woman. The projection of the wedding in this context intensifies the contrast between the two worlds, the heterosexual and the homosexual. Now the whole play has been very interestingly summarized by John McRae in a note on that play. According to McRae, it is not simply the first play in Indian theater to handle uh, openly gay themes of love, partnership, trust and betrayal. It is also a play about how society creates patterns of behavior and how easy it is for the individuals to fall victim to the expectations society creates. On a Maggi Night in Mumbai provides an authentic representation of the existential crisis, the dilemma and identity crisis faced by gays and lesbians. They have to be under constant fear of being labeled as abnormal or pervert. The normative discursive practices are so dominant in our society that whatever does not come under these practices is immediately sidelined and marginalized. Mahesh Datani has chosen Mumbai as the backdrop for this play because it is one of the metros where the marginalized and alternative sexes think that they might find a space to live their lives out normally. They hope to find some kind of acceptance of their marginalized sexualities in such metros. The intolerance against them creates a claustrophobic environment for them everywhere. And hence, they seem to assemble here in this play in Kamlesh's flat to find a space of their own, a space for them to belong to, far away from the outside world. Apart from highlighting the presence of homosexuality in society, the play also highlights the psychological and performative aspect of gender. Performance is after all the outer layer of gender, but the inner layer of gender, which is psychological, manifests itself differently. A person may behave like a man outside, but inside his mind, he may consider himself to be effeminate. The performative aspect of gender is always dominated by the heterosexual norms which are considered as the normal order and that is the reason why gay men in the play try to put up the face of a heterosexual man or woman and perform accordingly so that they can avoid excommunication from normal society. The heterosexual order which is so dominant that any deviation from it is considered as abnormal. These are the same compulsory heterosexual norms that suppress women in all social relations, all social traffic. Now the same issue has been discussed by Adrian Rich, for example, in her discussion on the compulsory heterosexuality in her essay uh, called Compulsory Heterosexuality and Lesbian Existence. According to Adrian Rich, compulsory heterosexuality is a tool by which patriarchy seeks to maintain its hegemonic authority. The same observation has been made by Gail Rubin, according to whom the suppression and oppression of homosexuality is a product of the same patriarchal uh, system that oppresses women. Thus, on a muggy night in Mumbai, deals with an entire community of the homosexuals and how homosexuals put up a performance of normal sexuality under social pressure. The speech that Bunny makes reveals the repressed environment in which they have to live, where they have no choice. Bunny says, I quote, I know, just as a man whom I love does not exist, I have denied a lot of things. The only people who know me, I, the real me, are present here in this room. And you all hate me for being a hypocrite." Unquote. He's a gay man who publicly avoids his gay friends, but in private he needs their love. It is the social fear of rejection that compels him to put on a mask on his real self, his real sexual orientation. Coming to the play Bravely Fought the Queen, we understand that unlike on a muggy night in Mumbai, which is a play about the community of homosexuals, 
Bravely for the Queen approaches this issue through the story of Alka and Nitin. And this is a very heterosexual world that we enter to encounter hidden sexualities. In the course of the action of the play, we come to know that Alka's marriage with Nitin is a forced one, which makes her life completely unlivable, completely miserable. Nitin adopts a very different and indifferent outlook to her, which drives her to the edge of sanity. Her loneliness becomes so intense that she has to take a recourse to total alcoholism to cope with her present life. In her conjugal life, Alka is made to feel like an unwanted object. Hence, we find that Nitin throws her out of the house only because he thinks that she might be offending his mother, Ba. This strange and violent behavior towards Alka undoubtedly puts a question mark on Nitin's character. What could be a reason for such neglect towards one or one's own wife? Why is he so indifferent to her? The answer to all these questions comes to light when Nitin reveals his gay identity and his relationship with Praful, Alka's own brother. Not only does Praful trick Nitin by saying that Alka knows about Nitin's gay identity, he has also tricked Alka by keeping her in the dark about his and Nitin's sexual uh, relationship. Actually, Praful uses Alka to fulfill his selfish motive, that to continue his homosexual relationship with Nitin will become possible within such a marriage. Thus, Alka falls prey to Praful's conspiracy, which leads her to her unhappy marriage with Nitin. And hence, Alka turns into a plaything for the Trivedi household as well as for her own brother, who cares nothing for her feelings. Now we find that Datani is drawing our attention here to the adverse outcomes of one's tendency to hide his or her sexuality and continue it privately. Praful tries to hide his sexuality publicly, but privately he continues his relationship with Nitin. In order to do so, he has to use his sister Alka by forcing her to marry Nitin. Thus, Praful's hypocrisy ruins the life of both Alka and Nitin. Datani brings into light the most dangerous outcome of society's denial of homosexuality and trying to erase it by social isolation, legal punishment or psychological counselling. In the earlier play, uh, on a muggy night in Mumbai too, we find a similar kind of situation that occurs, where unable to bear such social pressure, Ed tries to adopt compulsory heterosexuality and lead a normal life by visiting a psychiatrist. But this attempt is really uh, in vain and Kiran sees the intimate photograph of Ed and Kamlesh and becomes aware of his homosexual identity. So his plans to marry heterosexually also falls apart. So we find that um, this creates an acute feeling of isolation for Ed and he at the end of the play uh, will try to commit suicide. Now the presence of homosexuality in Indian society is not a new issue but as it is considered taboo people having alternative sexual orientations are bound to hide it and this leads to various other complications in society. However, we find that Mahesh Datani actually takes a bold step in some sense to reveal the presence of this invisible issue that our society has really not come to terms with even in contemporary times. Earlier, we find in the work of Vijay Tendulkar, we, he also makes a very interesting attempt to represent his, uh, f uh, his, in his play called A Friend's Story, the similar sorts of issues. But what makes the Dhani's treatment of homosexuality or alternative sexuality remarkable is that he does not treat a homosexual merely as a victim. Many of them fight back and find out their means of survival. Datani also brings into discussion the selfishness and hypocrisy taken up by many homosexual individuals to fulfill their sexual needs. This is evident in the character of Praful in Bravely Fought the Queen, whose hypocrisy, 
he whose hypocritical stances towards his partner or his sister ruins the life of both. In his relationship with Nitin, Praful performs the role of a victimizer and Nitin becomes the victim, who in turn makes Alka suffer. It is a vicious cycle and the same recourse to hypocrisy might also be noticeable in the characters of Kamlesh and Ed. Both decide to use Kiran to fulfill their selfish motives. Kamlesh agrees to fix his sister Kiran's marriage with Ed so that he can be in close contact with him. Ed also considers that this marriage would be convenient kind of an option to restart their relationship. In doing so, none of them bother about Kiran who really loves Ed and plans to start a new life with him. But after undergoing abuse and divorce from her first husband, she is looking forward to a new life which is only going to be a sham. And thus, like Alka in Bravely Fought the Queen, here Kiran becomes a plaything, a victim of their hypocrisy and manipulation. In this reading of two plays by Mahesh Tatani, uh, On a Magi Night in Mumbai and Bravely for the Queen, we find how Datani is able to bring to light some of the most dangerous outcomes of the society's denial of homosexuality and how trying to erase it by social isolation, legal punishment and psychological counselling does not really help. And so uh, with Mahesh Datani's Bravely for the Queen and in al also our consideration of uh, one of his most radically homosexual plays, uh, which actually focuses on a uh, community of homosexuals on a monkey night in Mumbai. Uh, in that sense, both of which are plays that break extremely new ground, that speak about alternative sexualities, that uh, address issues that have largely remained invisible in Indian society, that brings out homosexuality itself out of the closet and puts it on center stage. Uh, uh, this consideration of these two plays uh, are an important landmark in that sense in uh, Indian English drama. Thank you.